Uh, thank you very much. All right. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Ted Phipps. I'm the product manager for Cisco Finesse. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to be going through the features that are in Finesse 11.0. Uh, these are the features that are coming out in a release uh, towards the very end of August or early September. So uh, I'll, I'll detail each of those features. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the Finesse APIs and really how to get started and the benefit to you as developers uh, for using the Finesse APIs. <clears throat> so before I do that, we're just going to level set really quickly on, on what Finesse is, uh, if you're not already familiar. Uh, Finesse is our uh, next generation agent desktop. It is the it is 100% browser based. It is, uh, so no JRE, no Java dependencies, nothing like that. It is the replacement product for CAD and CTIOS uh, for both Express and Enterprise. <clears throat> in addition to being an, uh, an agent or supervisor desktop application, it's also the way in which you can pull different applications that your agents and supervisors might need into the Finesse container. So it has this container idea to it. So this means that you can have uh, a CRM application, a knowledge base, other functionality coming from the contact center portfolio all can be inserted into the Finesse container. So from an agent point of view, the benefit here is that agents get everything they need within one view. They don't need to switch between applications. Also, as developers, I want you to, to be aware of that we have a client-side message bus. So you can pass information from one gadget to another gadget uh, if you want to. One particular use case there is around copying and pasting of information. When we go and visit call centers, we see agents who are you know, copying and pasting and they're, and they're stressed out because they have to copy and paste and they're worried about fat fingering information. There's a, there's a tremendous opportunity here to streamline how information is passed from one application to another application when an agent is on a call. And the client side message bus is one way to do that. Now from an IT point of view, <clears throat> all these different applications are managed independently. So if you upgrade your CRM desktop, or you know you upgrade your CRM, Finesse doesn't know or care that you've upgraded the CRM. The new version of the gadget shows up inside of the container. Also, another benefit is that you can, when you add a new gadget to the Finesse container, that, that gadget is, it, that's all on the, on the Finesse admin that you do that. And, <clears throat> and when agents, when they go to log in, they see the new gadget. So this allows for a, a, a lot more iterative approach to making changes to the desktop. So contrast this with a client server model where you, where you try to provide this kind of functionality. On the server side, you have all these different applications that are highly coupled, all working together. You need to actually physically install something on the client. That means that you're not making changes to your desktop unless it's every 18 months. With this type of approach, you can be a lot more iterative. And I think that that opens up a lot of opportunity from, from a development point of view because I think there's a lot of customers that would love to do more more recent updates to their desktop or, or introduce little bits of functionality here and there. It's just they say, you know what, in a client server model, I can't, I can't risk that. In this model, it, it opens the door. So I think uh, as, you're, as you're developing uh, you know, applications, think about that because I think there's a lot more opportunity for you to be involved throughout, the, you know, at, a lot more, at a lot more touch points with a particular customer. Uh, so now I'm going to go through this feature set now. So everything I'm going to be talking about here are features that are common to both Express and Enterprise. So I'm not going to say that on every slide, just know that it's, it's for, every, uh, for both platforms. One feature that we introduced is accessibility. So this is uh, uh, specifically targeted uh, towards blind agents. So we, we put in so you can tab, you can tab through the entire application. Uh, and, and we also put in the proper HTML tags that, play, that, that would allow a JAWS screen reader to say the, the, whatever uh, control that, that particular agent's on. So we publish, uh, every single release of Finesse, we publish a VPAT or, or how we comply against accessibility, and we release it on our accessibility site. Uh, and, and to be honest, up until 11.0, the results really weren't good. We weren't very good with accessibility. We're a lot better uh, with 11.0, and that'll be noted in the VPAT. Also, uh, for developers, uh, what we'll do is if you develop your own application and the user uh, tabs through the application and they get to your application, you would be responsible for handling the accessibility within your own custom gadget. And then, and then as the user tabs out of your gadget, then, then the Finesse container picks it up again and, and you can tab through the application. Uh, another big feature we added is uh, having 
different call variable layouts. So if, if, if you recall, up until Finesse 11, we had uh, not ready codes and wrap up codes and gadget layouts all configured at the team level, but the one thing that was still global was the variables that we show in the call control gadget. So what we've done is we've done something very similar to the way it works on CAD, which is that uh, you define different layouts in the, in the, in the Finesse Admin. Uh, the, the, we have a default layout, but we, you can add as many layouts as you want. Each layout has a name. And then in your routing script, whether it be the step editor in Express or, uh, or, this, or sorry, the, the step editor Express or the script editor in CCE, you set the user.layoutECC variable to whatever layout you want to use. So each call for a particular agent could have a different layout, you know, depending, you know, depending on which layout you actually call. So, and the good news also for, for existing customers migrating from CAD, uh, it, we're using the same call variable layout, or we're using the same call variable. So if you're migrating from CAD, set the same names of your call variable layouts as what you had in CAD, and then you don't need to modify your routing scripts because you're still setting the variables the way you want them loaded. <clears throat> we're also introducing an IP phone agent in this release. So this is the ability for an agent to, uh, to control their agent state, do wrap up, uh, and see a call variable screen pop uh, for each call. So an agent can use either the Finesse desktop or they can use the IP phone agent. Uh, can't use both. For any of you keeping score, comparing this to CAD, the one piece of functionality we don't have here is we're not showing any queue statistics. So just, just keep that in mind. And there's also no supervisor controls, but CAD didn't have that either. Uh, so th there's also some licensing implications here too. So when you buy, and again, this, this applies to both platforms. When you buy a standard seat license on Express or Enterprise, you get the Finesse IP phone agent out of the box. Uh, uh, so you, you can, and, and you're not entitled to use the Finesse desktop, and there's no super, you're not entitled to use the Finesse supervisor. You can only use this uh, Finesse IP phone agent. You're not entitled to use the Finesse API yet either. Again, this, when you buy the standard seat, you're, it's, a, it's kind of a, you know, it's the price sensitive seat, it's, it's limited functionality, and it's only this IP phone agent. But also keep in mind, with CTI, you know, with CAD, we had an IP phone agent, we're introducing something similar. With CTI West, we didn't have this. So for any CTI West customers, this is certainly a, getting this out of the box is, is a big, uh, big feature that you didn't get with CTI West. When you buy enhanced or premium, you can use the IP phone agent. So really the use case here is disaster recovery. So agents using the Finesse desktop, their PC crashes, they go into the Finesse IP phone agent and, and, they, and they log in and they take calls that while their, while their PC is recovering. So this obviously means that some agents can be using IP phone agent, some can be using the desktop, supervisors are using the, the Finesse supervisor control, and you have full control over the Finesse API. Uh, we, this is the list of phones that we support with the IP phone agent. I'm not going to read this list out to you, but really the, just to explain the rationale, uh, the, the, we use the same architecture here that we used on CAD, which is the XML application that runs on the phone. So we support IP phone Asia on every phone that has the XML applications, and, and also that the endpoint is supported by the platform as a context center endpoint. So you notice here, no 9000 series phones because the 9000 series phones do not help have XML applications. But for customers who are using IP phone agent right now, they're going to be able to use their same phones and just use the Finesse IP phone agent instead of the CAD phone agent. Uh, we've also increased the number of supported team wrap-up codes. So we went from 100 team codes to 1,500 team codes. So this is how many we, we support on the Finesse server itself. And we've done a similar upgrade uh, in terms of the f uh, on the phone book uh, as well. So we went from a total of 50 team phone books to 300 team phone books and a total of uh, 1,500 phone book entries, which admittedly was way too low, up to 50,000 phone book entries. The one thing I want you to be aware of is that we, we still support a max of 1,500 phone book entries per Asia in the call control gadget. So it's 50,000 on the Finesse server, so you, know, you could have I don't know, uh, you know, 100 teams each having 1,500 unique entries, but, the, uh, but each agent can still only see 1,500 entries. Yes? It, we won't load anymore. 
So the question is, what happens if you have more than? So you could define you could define a bunch of phone books and and actually kind of configure the system so the agent would see 50,000 phone book entries. But what we do is when we load the, the agent desktop, we we stop we truncate after 1,500 entries and we don't load load any more than that. Another big feature, and this is a, a tremendous development opportunity for you, okay, um, is the context service. So uh, what, this, what this is, is, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna describe the out-of-the-box functionality. With 11.0, in the IVR, we're talking CVP or, in, or um, the step editor in Express, when a new contact comes in, new call comes in, we, we go to this cloud, Cisco-hosted contact service that's, that's in the Cisco cloud, and we say, we've got a new, we've got a new transaction. For, a, for this particular user. The contact service then correlates and says, okay, well, I've had you know, 10, 10 interactions for this particular user. So we're keeping, it, it's, it's really the first time that we've introduced the idea of having a, a, a record of, uh, for a particular user across multiple interactions. This, so this is much better than kind of call variables wh where it's, it's only good for that particular session. In this case, it traverses uh, all the different all the different interactions that this particular customer has had with the call center. So the IVR tells the cloud, we got a new interaction for this person. When the agent gets the call routed to them, they're gonna see this gadget out of the box inside of Finesse. Uh, UI is still being tweaked a little bit, but it's gonna be basically this type of UI. The agent is gonna be able to see all the interactions that that customer has had with, with the call center. So again, we're giving the agent a lot more context into why this person is calling, let them know, hey, this person has called three times today. You, you know, think, you know, treat this person a little bit differently than you would if, if you hadn't heard from them. Uh, now, that's the out of the box functionality. The development opportunity for you is the contact service is gonna be publishing an SDK to DevNet, and you'll, you'll be able to insert and, and pull data from this contact service as much as you want to. So you might wanna say, you know what? Um, this person went to the self-service portal five times over the last week, and now they called in. I bet they're, call I bet they're calling in because they went to that self-service portal. So I'm gonna, I I'm gonna let the agent know, hey, they probably call for the same reason, right? So, so you can put as much data as you want into this cloud from all the different data sources that you might have, and you can fetch data from this. So you might wanna see, you know, how many, how many interactions were handled at the first interaction or not? So there's a lot of reporting, data analytics, uh, user experience type of things uh, for you to for you to utilize here with the, with the SDK that's coming in the context service. Sorry, what was that? Uh, it's a it's the Cisco it's a Cisco private cloud. Um, there, there's there's a there's a few sessions here at Cisco Live where we're talking a lot. We have a whole session dedicated to this topic. I'm not sure if you if you. Uh, are able to go to those sessions or not, but expect a lot of details to come for this to come out on DevNet. We're gonna have a DevNet tech center just like all the other products where we'll let you know everything you need to know about this service. Uh, we've also increased the, uh, to the tolerance for the round trip delay between Finesse Client and the Finesse Server. So we had supported 200 milliseconds round trip delay. We're increasing that up to 400 milliseconds uh, with Finesse 11. Uh, here's the browser matrix, yes. The, 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 que uh, there, the question was, is there an integration to call recording with the context service? I'm not aware of an out of the box uh, solution there. Uh, I think that that's something that would be a custom development. I'm not aware of a recording uh, integration with contact service. If you could do that, we would that, probably buy that. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, I'll, I'll bring that back to the PM. Uh, if you know him, Vikram Schauber is the PM for contact service. Uh, I'll take a note and, and, and we'll chase that down a little bit. Uh, here's the browser compatibility for 11.0. Uh, really what we did compared to 10.5, we dropped IE9 support. So we're supporting IE10, IE11. We're supporting the, the ESR branch or the extended support release version of uh, Firefox, uh, so we're not gonna support just any Firefox version, we're gonna stick to the ESR version. That's what all of our customers should be using 
Uh, that's what everyone should be using is the, is the, is the kind of the enterprise class uh, there. So I'll preempt your question. Chrome support, that is something that we are considering. Uh, uh, to, we we want to get that out as soon as possible after 11.0 releases. Hopefully we can do that before the next major release because we're, see, we're starting to see a lot of demand for that. But I think uh, what you're going to find is 11.0 is going to be the last release. We don't support Chrome across the board. 11.5, I'm very confident that we're going to have Chrome support across the board for all the products. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a few features that are uh, unique to CCE. Uh, so direct preview outbound. Uh, prior to this, we had supported progressive and predictive and preview outbound. We did not support direct preview. Direct preview, uh, so this is the last outbound mode that we hadn't supported with Finesse. Uh, just uh, preview outbound is where the agent, uh, both in preview and direct preview outbound, the agent sees kind of a screen pop of who it is and they can decide whether they want to talk to the person or not. So as soon as they say, yes, I want to talk to this person, in preview outbound, it's the dialer that's making the call. And it's the dialer that's doing the call progress analysis that's saying uh, this was a you know, ring no answer or this was a, a, a busy, busy phone line or something like that. With, with this, with direct preview, it's, it's the phone calls made from the Asian desktop, and it's the agent who has to manually do the call progress analysis. It's good for some use cases, and now it's supported with Finesse. Uh, other features, <coughs> uh, if you'll recall, with Finesse, uh, we connect to the AW uh, to authenticate agents. We've, uh, but we are using NTLM v1, not very secure, so we've, we've changed that. We're now supporting either NTLM v2 or Windows SQL Server uh, as the mechanism to, to uh, authenticate to agents. <clears throat> uh, and this works for all the different versions of CCE that we support. So um, also from a make call API, we were too restrictive there. We'd only supported some characters. We didn't support like any kind of character. And you need, you know, you, there's kind of like author, uh, authorization codes, uh, other use cases for, for supporting any ASCII character. So we just opened it up. We support any ASCII, any ASCII character when you make a call. Also, Finesse 11 uh, will support CCE 10, 10.5, uh, and 11.0. So we try to be as flexible as possible with, with having Finesse support as many CCE versions as possible. So again, Finesse 11, uh, end of August, early September. So there's a, what I want to do, if, if you're not already aware, is we announced uh, an end of life for CAD and CTIOS uh, earlier this year. So this is, does not impact customers that are using a third-party PBX, uh, Avaya, something like this. They continue to use ICM. This is for Contact Center Enterprise and Contact Center Express. And the way that um, it's going to work is starting with 10, or, or 10.6 is the last version where we support CAD. Starting with 11.0, CCX 11.0 is finesse only for new customers and existing customers. CCE 11.0, uh, existing customers to, can migrate to 11.0 and continue to use CTIOS, but new customers have to use Finesse. We had wanted to have the same policy on Express, but just to explain the rationale, we had revved the, the operating system version on Express, the VOS, the, the appliance that we use, the Linux that we use, and CAD wouldn't work on that. So it kind of forced our hand a little bit. That's why uh, 11.0 is Finesse only. So for those of, for, for customers that, uh, can't move to Finesse for whatever reason, they should park themselves on 10.6 uh, and not go to 11. But we certainly, all customers should be working on a migration plan uh, for how they're going to get to Finesse. Uh, uh, just, I didn't include the slide here, but <clears throat> the two key dates, July 2016 is end of software maintenance date for CAD and CTIOS. That means after July 2016, Cisco is not obligated to provide patches for CTIOS and CAD. And starting in July 2018, <coughs> um, uh, that's when end of support would happen. <coughs> so from a development point of view, there is a tremendous opportunity here to, uh, to get on the Finesse bandwagon and, uh, and start to develop applications on top of Finesse because our entire customer base is, is certainly all new customers are moving to Finesse. Uh, and we're starting to see a big move of, of existing customers to move. And, and when, one thing I've noticed is we talk to some customers who are using CAD and they, a, a typical use case that I see is customers that are using CAD, they're not using a lot of stuff in CAD, 
and you know they were kind of just using CAD for agent state and some call control, and they have all their other applications that they're using that they could never, ins never you know, put inside of CAD. And now they say, okay, now I'm gonna move to Finesse. It's not a big deal for me because I'm not using a lot of these detailed CAD features, but now I have all these other applications. Now, now there's a tremendous opportunity for them to take their applications, put them inside of Finesse, or use the Finesse API to do things that they could never do with CAD. So th th some of this is kind of an awareness uh, for customers to say, you know what, I can do things that I couldn't do before. And it's also uh, an opportunity for development partners to really uh, explore the Express space in ways that they couldn't because we hadn't had these APIs on Express before. So um, just some integration options. So we have two classes of integration here. One is that for customers that want to have all their applications in one container, you can build gadgets, take your CRM, put your knowledge base, things like this, build those as gadgets, put them inside of the Finesse container. That's one approach. The other approach is use the Finesse API and put the Finesse API inside of your own uh, application. A CRM connector is a perfect example of, of that type of application. So both are perfectly valid. We support both. What's best is really dependent on uh, customer requirements. But again, there's a real development opportunity here for both approaches. Finesse APIs is, REST, is a REST-based API. Uh, so it, URL, so really the example here, if I want to set the state, set the state of agent 1001 uh, to ready, I would pass in a URL with 1001 on the, on the back end of that URL. My XML document says I want to set the state of the agent to, to, to 1001. And the, the client is going to receive an XML app, uh, app notification back that's going to include that XML. So very thin, lightweight API. Uh, so you can, you can code to the REST API. And we also have a JavaScript API on top of this. Um, if you wanted to use the JavaScript API. We have uh, development partners and customers that are using both. Some use the REST API, some use the JavaScript API. Uh, and everything is published on our DevNet site. So we have everything on the DevNet site, including uh, the JavaScript library, links to the developer guide, forums for Q&A, sample gadgets, sample code, uh, a lot of stuff up there. We have someone staff full time uh, answering questions that you might have around, around the API. We have a number of development partners that have built all kinds of different integrations to Finesse, all the way from customers that are development partners that have built gadgets, all the way to some development partners who have uh, built headset integrations. So there, there's a lot of opportunity here. We have some uh, development partners that are targeting kind of you know some feature gaps that we have right now in Finesse, make it easier for customers to migrate. So there's a there's a lot of different uh, different strategies that you can employ to make money using the Finesse API that were not possible at all before CAD and CTIOS. So I think I have about five or so minutes left uh, for questions. So what I'll do is I'll I'll just pause here and and uh, if I can hear your question, I will try to answer it. Yes. Uh, does Finesse IPPA require third-party products to fly availability? Sorry, so could you repeat does that? Does Finesse IPPA require third-party products for high availability? I yes. assume it's an XML application, so the phone points to some XML. So would it point to one IP of the HA node, for example, on CCX or to another one? Yep. How does it work? Okay. The, uh, from a high, high availability to this kind of own topic, but the, the question there was how does high availability work? We have two Finesse servers. They are a mirror copy of one another. When, the, when, it, when one Finesse server goes down, we have what we call smarter failover logic. The, the client uh, will automatically redirect over to the other Finesse server and use all the same, uh, the agent will have their call control gadget, all their gadgets, all their configuration is identical on the other side, and they'll be able to uh, handle calls just like they were before the failover happened. Uh, we also adhere to really the same failover high-level failover logic that we did on CAD and, and, and uh, or Express and Enterprise. So on, on, on Express, there's a primary node that's up. When that primary goes down, the other side takes over and Finesse adheres to that. The other side uh, is active and, and, and all the failover is, is automatic. Oh, oh, sorry. The question was more specific around IP phone agent. 
With IP phone agent, the XML application that runs on the phone isn't capable of, of some of these complex uh, failover. So it, the, the, it's the same way as it works in CAD, which is you have two XML applications that run on the phone. If the agent, if, if one goes down, the agent has to manually use their phone to log into the other. Same way it worked on CAD. Other questions? Oh, yes. So with the Finesse API, are you, are you able to uh, get events, you know, call state events, agent state events, through the API, or do you have to use some other mechanism? Yep. We, we have a uh, XMPP and Bosch uh, approach for receiving events. So you can code to that, and you can, you can receive events. The one thing that we don't, so, so if you log in as a particular agent, you will get all the events for that agent. What we don't have yet, and which is something we do have to do, but it's not coming in 11, is kind of an, the concept of an all events feed. So you could log in and receive all the events for all the agents. We don't have a finesse API for that yet, but that is something that we, we need to do. So I'm, I'm about out of time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and if there's anything I could do to help you uh, uh, with your uh, integrations to finesse, please reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you. Thank you very much.